My name is Jason Bryde. I'm here to talk to you tonight about mobile device forensics, and I'm a computer forensic examiner. A few years back, this photo by Adam Savage of Mythbusters was posted to Twitter. It's his Jeep outside his home. Now, every time you take a picture, some certain data is hidden inside there. It could be whether the flash fired, what type of camera you're using, but when you take a photo with your smartphone, it can really contain a lot. This photo, unbeknownst to Adam, contained the precise GPS location of his home thanks to his iPhone's geotagging feature. Now, if you had a, a show whose demographic seems to be obsessed with watching things explode in different ways, I feel like this would be the last thing I might want them to know. Today, over half of U.S. adults own a smartphone. That's over 100 million people walking around with a computer in their pocket, one that is incredible at an incredible number of things. But respecting your privacy, as I'm about to show, is not one of them. This is the lettuce you eat at Burger King. And it was posted anonymously to a forum. But just nine minutes after this was posted, someone is grossed out by this, as you probably are, did the same thing with the Adam Savage photo. And Mayfield Heights, Ohio does not have a lot of Burger Kings. He was fired within the day after calls to the local news, BK Corporate, and the local store were received from other anonymous users who don't like feet in their lettuce. But you're not a jerk, I hope, like that guy. But we still wait on five-hour lines to opt into a system that has the potential to track and record and analyze almost all of our behaviors. Let me give you an example. Every time you talk to Siri, everything you say is recorded and sent to Apple. And not only with your name, but the names of all of your contacts. It's a, it's a little freaky. So IBM went so far as to completely ban Siri for the use of its employees, realizing as a direct competitor that they could be essentially spying on IBM. Their appointments, their ideas, their uh, emails even, if you compose an email. A completely different example. Remember when GPS used to take a while to sort of locate where you were? I remember this very vividly as I was leaving Hopkins ER one morning at 2 a.m. and I got lost. And you don't forget those three minutes of searching for signal. If you keep, if you keep recalculating, I'm going to die. <laughs> but now our smartphones kind of do that for us. And isn't it funny when you turn on that GPS, even if it was off before, your phone knows where you are almost immediately? Well, that's because it does. This is a map that anyone could have generated if they had access to your iPhone with free software about a year or two back. And it, a year of all the activity, all the places someone has been with that phone. And it's sliceable and diceable down to the second. When this was first found out, people were curious, why is my iPhone logging my location? And Apple said, no, no, we're not. We're simply maintaining a database of Wi-Fi hotspots and cell towers around your current location. But let's, um, let's talk that out for one second. I'm not going to tell you where I am, but see if you can figure it out. I'm near a, a Bob Barker-ish microphone. And I'm near a large white screen that says public relations. And I'm in front of a few hundred people who I hope know bullshit when they hear it. So what's my point here? Yes, if I talk to Siri, she records all my intimate thoughts and sends them off to Apple forever. Yes, if I don't leave, if I don't turn geolocation off, people will know where I took a picture. Yes, my phone knows where I am. What's the point? The point is we trade a little bit of privacy for convenience. Now, there's trade-offs to that trade. But one thing people don't consider is its effect on the criminal justice system. Now, for better or worse, it's a lot like DNA was back in the 80s, this digital evidence, its potential. Now, a lot of you know the face that just appeared on the screen. It's Casey Anthony. She was thought by the state of Florida to have suffocated her two-year-old daughter, but she was acquitted. However, there was a piece of digital evidence that was not presented at trial, and I want to show it you. It's a Google search for foolproof suffocation. Done on her home computer, with activity from Casey surrounding it while her cell phone was pinging the tower closest to her home on the last day her daughter was seen alive. This was not presented at trial. Why? Why was this not presented? Because in the, digital, in the Casey Anthony case, digital evidence was simply an afterthought. In a two and a half year investigation, it was requested with just 60 months till trial and they simply missed it. Think about the impact that that would have had. Now, I'm not advocating for Big Brother, nor do I want everyone to run out and become Luddites and swear off their iPhones, but there's always going to be a trade-off between societal security and privacy and convenience. But I think the first thing that we have to do 
is know the pros and cons to both of those things. Because the devices that we're carrying are not just gadgets anymore. They are part of our communal DNA. And regardless of where you stand on this issue, I think we can all find common ground in the happy fact that sometimes they can help ensure that justice and not foot lettuce is being served.